Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. So today I'm excited to go through this course with you. This is a middle school science course by Berean Builders. This is Science in the Atomic Age. I believe it is pretty new. I did go looking for some videos to talk about this course and I saw maybe one or two videos. So I'm excited to share this with you guys today. So this is a course that I picked up for possibly using with my middle school boys in the future. I'm not planning on using it this year. I have my own course that I'm working on for that, but this is a possibility for us next year. So I'm excited to look through this with you and just share what I know about this course. So this course was given to me by Timber Doodle in exchange for a flip through and a look inside with you. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope it gives you a good idea of whether or not this is something that you would be interested in using at some point. Okay, so I have the textbook here and then I have the answer key and tests. We'll look at that in a minute. Let's start out with the textbook. Now, I'm curious to know when this came out. I haven't checked yet, but I think this one is pretty new. I know Berean Builders has a progressive science course. They start with science in the beginning, and it, then it's, I think it's science in ancient times, and then I don't know what comes after that. But this one was published in, looks like 2020. So this one is pretty recent, third printing, 2023. All right, so. I guess this was probably started in 2020. So we have the introduction here. We're going to take a tour of some of the scientific concept we learned since the beginning of the 20th century. It says you might be tempted to call this modern science since the 20 and 21st centuries are considered modern times. However, much of what we call modern science was learned long before the 20th century. That's because science is built on the work of previous scientists. If it weren't for the work of natural philosophers that stretched back into times before Christ, we wouldn't know nearly as much about the world around us as we do today. So that's sort of the first paragraph here. As you heard, it talks about Christ. It talks about God. This is a Christian science course. So what is unique about this science course as well is that it goes through, like I said, it says science in the beginning, which talks about science like in the creation times. So from God's speaking light and separating the skies from the earth and then the living creatures and stuff like that. So it goes through that and then ancient times. So it talks about ancient times and discoveries and it just kind of works its way through history. And so this is the most modern book, like you said. You would call it modern science, except it is built upon the backs of scientists in the past. So it takes a unique approach in that it follows science through history. So I really like that because I just love history. And so if we can add science to history, I think that is really preferable in my opinion. Okay, so how to use this book? It says this book is made up of 16 chapters. The first one is shorter than the others because it is a general introduction to science and the process of documenting experiments. Each chapter contains reading and experiments that you need to complete as well as questions you must answer. You are supposed to perform the experiments when they come to you in the reading because right after the experiment, I will discuss what the experiment means. So this is very much a mix of reading and experiments. Experiments are an integral part of this course. All right, so it says experiments and activities. There are several experiments that are scattered throughout the course. You will end up doing an average of four experiments every two weeks. The first chapter will lead you through how you should approach and document each experiment. So I believe they're going to start telling you how to work on lab reports as you're going through this. So this is a lab heavy course for a middle school student. Experiment supplies. So it says the experiments you do in this course use household items or items that are easy to get at a grocery store, drug store, or hardware store. Before you start each chapter, you should look at Appendix B near the end of the book. It contains a list of all the materials you will need to do the experiments in that chapter. Check and make sure you have all of them. And if you don't, ask your parents to get them for you so that you can do the experiments when you get to them in the reading. So it sounds like this book is written to the child at this point, if they're telling them to go tell their parents. So I will also say that I know you can get supply kits 
for this, for example. So if I were to do this course, I would probably go ahead and buy a supply kit. I do not love looking and scrounging for supplies. So that is something I would probably do. It says one supply you will need for every experiment is your laboratory notebook. You will be keeping a record of all your experiments and I will give you detailed instructions on how to do that in chapter one. The notebook can be anything you want it to be, a spiral bound notebook, a clock bound notebook, a diary, etc. It just needs to have a lot of pages for you to write in. Honestly, the best kind of pages are blank pages, but you will do a lot of writing on those pages. If you have a hard time writing without lines, get a notebook that has lined paper. Okay, so you can just use a notebook paper. There are notebook pages that you can download from their website. So I will take you over there and show you those. So free PDF download, there's notebooking pages. You can also get those notebooking pages at timberdoodle.com as well. So there's a booklet that I did not get, but you can get those as well if you would like to with this course. And I'll talk a bit more about that as we go along. Okay, so as you can see so far, it's looking nice and colorful. We have some pictures, some captions. So chapter one is the scientific method and experimentation. So this sounds like a great course to just start learning about the scientific method and how to do lab reports and things like that. This is something we have not done in my homeschool at all up until this point, and I have some high schoolers this year. So we're gonna to have to learn, but it would be nice if we could have covered that a little bit earlier with like my middle schoolers. Here we have our model of the atom. Elements and compounds, covalent compounds. I'm not a science person. I'm sorry if I mispronounced these words. Chemistry and living things. The cell, more on prokaryotic cells, plants, tissues, skin and bones, muscles and blood, respiratory and lymphatic system, digestive and renal systems, the nervous and endocrine systems, organisms, population and community, and ecosystems, biome, and biosphere. All right, so here is the beginning of chapter one. So I'm just gonna flip through this so you can take a look. I see some definitions here. So underlined in definitions here, we have some bolded names of scientists, some bold words here. And then we have a comprehension check here. So this is something that would be in that PDF download that you could get for free or your child would answer it in their notebook. You're admiring a flower in a garden. Which of the following questions can be directly studied by science? What makes the smell that the flower emits or what makes the flower beautiful? So which of these could you study by science? You have been studying a goldfish in a bowl for a long time. You have observed how it eats, grows, swims, etc. You develop an explanation for how a goldfish gets the energy it needs to survive. It explains everything you have observed. Is your explanation a hypothesis or a theory? And then 1.3, suppose you decide to test the explanation that you made in question 1.2. You make a prediction about what will happen if you regularly overfeed the goldfish. You start doing that and what you observe is not what you predicted. At this point, you have two options regarding what to do about your explanation. What are they? So definitely going through the scientific method here. All right, so then we have another one here. This is an experiment. And then more reading to do. And then chapter one, I'm not sure if that's talk, I think that's talking about the experiment that they just did. And another comprehension check. And then the answers to the comprehension check questions here at the back. Okay, and then a chapter review. And then this is chapter two. So I'm just gonna flip through some pages here so you can take a look, see what it's like. The chapters, I don't know, that first chapter I guess was supposed to be a little shorter. So how many chapters were there? Let's see, there were 16 chapters, so I guess each chapter would take maybe about two weeks and give you a little extra time at the end of the school year. So 
So chapter two is definitely a little bit longer. And then chapter three, elements and compounds. So it is really important for this science that you are ready to do experiments throughout. So not just pick a day to do experiments, but just be ready when you do science to do experiments. I'm not sure if you would need to do this five days a week or if you could do it maybe three days a week. It seems like three days a week might be doable if you have a longer block. Yeah, so that is what the textbook looks like. Here's Appendix B, the experiment supplies that you need for each chapter. Yeah, these are always overwhelming to me. This is why I want to buy a kit. <laughs> We have an index, and what was A here? Appendix A. Oh, there's a glossary here. Go to credits, and all right, so Appendix A looks like a bunch of different illustrations here, okay? And then, yeah, this is the textbook. So I think it's very beautiful. I think it covers a wide variety of topics which could be very interesting for kids who like to learn about different things within the year. So that is the textbook. It's a pretty thick little book here. And now we have the answer key and tests. Okay, so we have introduction here again. And then talks about the experiments. There are a total of 58 experiments in this course, and they are found in the student text. So that's what we just saw. As a general rule, students should do the experiments as they come to them in the reading. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay, so then we have answers to chapter one review. So when they do their review, you can go over the answers for, with them. And then here is the test for chapter one. So each chapter has a test. So it looks like short answer mostly. Okay, answers to the test. Okay, answers to chapter two review. So there's a lot more in there. Test for chapter two. Okay, so I'm assuming it's gonna follow that pattern for a while here. And do we have, yeah, so it's just a mix of tests and answers. So I'm guessing you would probably photocopy this to give it to your student. I'm assuming we can photocopy this. All right, so that is what is in this book here. Now I'm going to take you onto the computer and just show you the inside of the workbook that you can download, the PDF download, and so you can get a look at what you could get for free or purchase separately. So here I am at Berean Builder's site here. And so this is Science in the Atomic Age. I was, actually here's the main page here, but, if I go down to product resources here, I have some resources I can look at. So I have the table of contents, sample of the text, lab supply list by chapter, suggested daily assignment schedule. That's interesting. Let me take a look at that. Okay, so there's talking about daily assignments are built into the layout of the textbook. You will basically spend seven days in a given two week period reading and doing experiments. You will then spend two days answering questions in the chapter review. Finally, you'll spend one day taking the test. So it is laid out to be a 10 days per chapter. This book is made up of 16 chapters. The first one is shorter than the others because it is a general introduction to science and to the process of documenting experiments. Each chapter contains reading and experiments that you need to complete as well as questions you must answer. You are supposed to perform the experiments when they come to you in the reading because right after the experiment, I will discuss what the experiment means. Okay, so let's go back here. We have worksheets. So these are worksheets. How many pages do I have here? 93 pages. So these are the worksheets that you can download for free or you can purchase a printed copy. So it is basically the comprehension questions and with a bit of space for you to fill in the answers here. And then we have the chapter review questions here. So it's just giving you space with the questions here 
so your child can answer. So you don't need this workbook, but it is easier if you have kids who need this written out for them separately. So we have all those things. And then I believe there are lab sections too. So let's see if they're, if I go through here. So I'm not seeing any lab things yet. So maybe let me go check on the back here. Okay, so these are just the review questions all the way to the end there. And then we have, okay, so then we have student workbook. Maybe that's what it is. Student workbook for science in the atomic age. Okay, so we have daily assignments, worksheets, documenting experiments, and the laboratory notebook. So wondering if this is just about the same. Okay, so this looks like it gives even a little more space for answering questions. And then once we get down here, so this is, yeah, giving us more space for answering questions. This one is 304 pages long. So at what point does this, these look like a lot of blank pages here. Okay, so then here we have documenting experiments. So it talks about how to document your experiment. And then I think that we just have the laboratory notebook, which you would be using the information above to document the experiments. And so these are just a bunch of pretty much blank pages here for your child to put their experiments in. So that is something that you can find here at bereanbuilders.com. So you could just print that off if you wanted the PDF version. And then we have the scope and sequence here. So it says this course is not for high school credit. This is a middle school course and designed to give students a broad introduction to the sciences. It begins with a short chapter on scientific method and the role of experiments in science. In that chapter, students learn how to document the experiments they will do throughout the rest of the course. All right, so just once again saying it is a middle school course. So the scope and sequence, I think it then goes through and tells what the student would be learning in this course. So I hope this look inside was helpful for you. I hope it was helpful in letting you know if this is something that you might want to try with your child next year. If you like videos like this, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be going through and doing a lot of reviews and flip throughs, as well as planning out my homeschool year for my four kids who are going into sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade this year. So if you like planning videos, if you like homeschool curriculum videos, if you like flip throughs, reviews, and things like that, don't forget to stick around, subscribe, and follow along. Thanks so much for coming today, and I hope to see you all in a future video. Bye, everyone.